Interesting. <laughs> yeah. We haven't uh, asked you yet, after this session, do you intend to count to, um, uh, contact your councillors? But we think you should. Maybe by the end you'll be convinced. Um, interesting, though. Okay. Vast majority have never contacted them. Good to know. Interesting. Um, cool. Please, could we have it back to the slides? Unless anyone wants to comment on that, what we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did skip past that. Great. Um, hi, everybody. My name's Julia. I'm the Policy and Advocacy Manager at my society. Um, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about this report that we've written and the work that we're doing around the idea of fragmented public data. Not so much on the content of the report, actually, but some reflections for me on a year of doing this job and how we can have policy impact as a small organization that focuses on civic tech. Um, I think it's worth saying to begin with, oh sorry, could I also see the slides for you in the, the sorry, the notes for you in the monitor if possible. Um, uh, it's worth saying that yeah, I, as you might have guessed from my job title, do not build any of the amazing services that we run. Um, and instead I kind of see my role as both a bit above and below the services. So this is very much looking at the upstream of the data that we get from government and elsewhere for us to be able to build our services. But I'm also interested in the way that people then use them and how there's a connection between the two. Um, so yes, firstly, I'll just tell you a bit about the report. Um, Unlocking the value of fragmented public data was published, I think, last year or the year before. And it was written by Alex Parsons, our senior researcher who's in the room, and also the lovely Anna Powell-Smith from the Center for Public Data. Um, we say that fragmented public data is a problem that happens when organizations are required to publish the same data, but it's not published in a common, um, to a common standard or a common location. So there's loads of useful data out there, but it's buried in PDFs across council websites, and so we can't do anything with it. Um, and so we recommend a collaborative but required data standard to agree the data in a format that everybody can use, an online central repositor repository so that we can find that data, and then support for a data convener to make publication simple and effective. So just trying to maximize the use of this data. There's loads more in the report, and we've also written blogs on it, which are you know, available on our website. Um, great, and so I think this follows on really nicely from what Zarino and Don were saying, because the um, scorecards are a great example of the brilliant stuff that does come out of this landscape. But the reason that we have to make things like the scorecards is because that data isn't available. There are no, um, there's no requirement of UK local authorities to publish climate data that all goes to one place that we can use. Um, and we know, as Zarina mentioned, that one third of the UK's emissions are within the power or influence of local authorities. Um, we build uh, services that support local authorities, but to, to improve these tools, we just need more data. Um, and yeah, there's a little case study here, and Don's already mentioned that um, the scorecards use freedom of information request, but um, the case study is about EPC certificates of council-owned homes. Um, all councils are required to publish a register of their assets and the EPC ratings, but it's just not published in an open data format that we can do anything with. So instead, Climate Emergency UK used what do they know to send freedom of information requests to every council in the UK so that we can then build that data set. Um, and it should be easier than that. So um, we also have some recommendations on the kinds of data that we need. Um, so to understand the authority emissions, obviously the very most basic level is structured data of council scope one to three emissions. We need to know how the carbon, you know, like the carbon savings that are being made. But I think um, some of the really useful stuff actually goes beyond that. So to understand the effects on the area, we want broader data about the local authorities' influence and activities. They have so much sway over just over more than just their direct scoped emissions. Um, the scorecards goes a long way to capture some of this, but we want more. And then finally, to understand development setbacks and changes, it's really useful for us to get a sense of context and reflections. What um, actions were the councils taking that worked well, which didn't work well, why? What do they have to say about that? Um, obviously, the thing with council uh, climate action in the UK is all councils are taking these actions. This has to be happening up and down ac and across the country. And all councils are a little bit different, which makes it hard, but they are also quite similar in lots of ways. Um, so learnings from one can be fed back into the other. The screenshot here is from the Sustainable Scotland Network. Um, in Scotland, there is required reporting for local councils on their emissions, and some questions that go a bit towards um, two and three here. And what we know from the report that Don talked about from council scorecards 
is that Scotland scores higher than the other nations in the UK. So there is some evidence to say that reporting on this does encourage um, better action from councils. Um, great, but this does come um, with some qualifications because councils in the UK are um, funded in a really, uh, you know, aren't funded enough and are funded in a way that is complicated and hard to access. So we think that they need support to deliver this. Um, there's a few things here. We want more transparency and action around the local net zero forum. This was set up as a connection between national and local government. But um, our friend Isaac from Climate Emergency UK, Don's colleague, submitted a freedom of information request, again using what do they know, plug for what do they know, um, and we found not only does this forum meet very irregularly, well firstly they didn't publish any information about the forum whatsoever, um, and we asked for their minutes and the attendees, and I think it's only happened twice a year in the last three years, and the forum in February 2023, the only attendees were a junior secretary from the House of Lords, um, and a councillor and chair of the local government association. So the only organisation represented were the LGA, um, who were important but not the only actor in the sector. Um, we want greater coherence around the role of the Office for Local Government, um, and especially how they prioritise their metrics. Ofslog um, have a data explorer, but the metrics that they're using at the moment are quite limited, and a lot of them focus around recycling rates. Um, there's not a lot of support um, in how to use those, and that created articles like this one that we saw in the Times a month or so ago, which uh, ranked councils against each other, but in a way that um, directly compared councils of different sizes, different structures, exactly the sorts of things that we ask people not to do with the scorecards data. Um, the Central Digital and Data Office could play this con convening role. I think there is more work going on here that other people in the room might know more about than me. Um, and I think, <laughs> as I'm talking, Keir Starmer might also be talking, and I know that there are plans for a, um, a national data library that's being announced today, so, you know, exciting. There could be more uh, work in this space. Um, but finally, yeah, it's worth saying that we and Climate Emergency UK are both members of the Blueprint Coalition, and that is um, groups of um, NGOs, charities, but also local government organisations which include, but are beyond the LGA, to work together to try and advocate for more climate action. Um, yeah, now I want to actually go on to, in the last year, how are we trying to like make impact with these policy asks that we have and reflections on them. Um, one really nice example, you can see in the top left here, we had um, a leader of Wiltshire Council write an article in the LGC, which is a local government um, focused uh, news outlet in the UK, saying the scorecards are really good in lots of ways, but what would make them really much better is if it had more actual um, uh, data in it about scoped emissions. Without scoped emissions, these aren't useful. But <laughs> uh, Annie from Climate Emergency UK and I wrote a response to say, we agree, we really wish that that data existed, but it doesn't. Like, we are here arguing that that data should exist, it doesn't, that's part of why we make the scorecards. And the happy answer to this is that Richard Kluwer, the leader of Wiltshire Council, then joined Climate Emergency UK and myself on the steering group for the next round of scorecards. And so now has engaged with us um, and has signed off all of the questions for the next scorecards and is, I think, a big you know, advocate of the scorecards. Um, we've also been running some webinars, and so this was in partnership with the Blueprint Coalition. We ran a webinar just kind of trying to get people more interested in this. I think we had about 80 people attend. Um, we'd like to do more of these sorts of things. Um, we had a great speaker, Owen Devane, from the Climate Change Committee, um, who made the case that one of the key things that needs to happen going forward is just more clarity on the role of local government, and so that's something that I hope we see um, in the next government. We're doing the things like uh, submitting responses to inquiries. And then finally, I think uh, one to mention, which is interesting at this point in time, is that we, especially through Louise, our CEO, built a great um, relationship with Chris Skidmore, who was an MP and the chair of the Mission Zero Coalition. He wrote a report called The Future is Local, and in every publication since has mentioned our fragmented data asks, talked about um, the need for better data from local councils in order to join these things up. And so I think to have policy impact as a small team to get stakeholders like MPs on side is really important. Um, the trouble is he's now stood down and is not going to be an MP anymore. Um, but we're at a time when there's going to be potentially hundreds of new MPs. And so that's going to be my job to build some more of those connections. Um, great. The, so that's some of that stuff. But the final thing I wanted to show you is going back to the people who do build our services. 
If you haven't seen it, we have our newest service is called the Local Intelligence Hub. If you scan this QR code, I'll get out of the way, it will take you there. And I think this is really important because I think one of the most amazing things about my society is this um, uh, showing by doing, like showing you what we can do with the data. One great argument for having better data is building cool things with it. Um, the Local Intelligence Hub, if you click on it and you can press use your location um, to find out about this area, you can look at both your previous parliamentary constituency, your future one that is currently being contested, and your local council area. Um, shout out to Climate Emergency UK because the scorecards that you just heard about are in the council part. And shout out to Democracy Club, who we have lots of friends here from, who give us the candidate data so you can see who the candidates are standing in the future, sorry, the, the now, <laughs> the current parliamentary constituencies. Um, I love this tool. I think it brings together so much of what is cool about my society. There's so many data sets in there. We're constantly improving it, but we need more data to go into it. If we had more data that was organized by council level, by parliamentary constituency, by postcode, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. So, yeah, that's also a question for the room to come back to us about, um, you know, data that you'd like to see in here, data that you know about.